الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد So the title of today's lecture is concerning a very important topic and this is the best investment with the best returns. And for this, ta for this talk, inshallah ta'ala, we will contemplate over some of the verses from the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. And it's important for every Muslim, male and Muslim female, at all times and especially during these times, to reflect over the Quran. Because in the supplication, that is authentically transmitted from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we find mention in there, and taj'al al-Qur'ana rabi'a qalbi wa nura sadri, al-hadith. The Muslim asks Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala to make the Qur'an the spring of his heart and the light of his chest. And just reflect upon that. And taj'al al-Qur'ana rabi'a qalbi. I ask you, Allah, to make the Qur'an the spring of my heart. And we know in order for vegetation and plants to grow, they require water. And for the heart to be nourished, it is in need of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For the believer to recite it, to reflect upon it, and to implement it. And the verses that we will discuss from the book of Allah Azza wa Jal this evening, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu, hal adullukum ala tijaratin tunjikum min, tunjikum min adabin alim. O you who believe, shall I direct you to an investment, a transaction, tunjikum, that will save you Min adabin alim from a painful torment. Just think about that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah Azza wa Jal is Al Ghani Al Hamid, the all rich, the one free from having any needs, the one deserving of all praise, directing us towards a transaction, an investment that will save us from a painful torment. يا أيها الذين آمنوا هل أدلكم على تجارة تنجيكم من عذاب أليم؟ O you who believe, shall I direct you towards an investment, تجارة that will save you from a painful torment. And think about this, brothers and sisters. As Al-Imam Al-Sa'di rahimahullah, he said, هذه وصية ودلالة وإرشاد من أرحم الراحمين لعباده المؤمنين لأعظم تجارة يحصل بها النجاة من العذاب الأليم والفوز بالنعيم المقيم. We find that this is a direction. This is direction, advice and guidance from the most merciful to his servants, his believing servants. And Allah Azza wa is directing them to the best investment. Because through this investment, the individual will achieve salvation from the torment of hell and they will attain eternal bliss, meaning of paradise. May Allah bless us all with paradise. And that's what it is about. That is ultimate success. The attainment of paradise and escaping the punishment of the hellfire. And notice, brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these ayat, in these verses, Allah azza wa he mentions the condition because tijara for investment, there are conditions to make an investment. Also, 
There is ra's al mal, you require capital. I think we all agree on that. If somebody wants to make an investment, you require funds, capital. And thirdly, there are profits that the person expects. Because tijara, tijara is what? Tijara is bedlu ra's al mal, talaban li ribh. A person spends some capital, invests some funds, and they desire and they seek profit. That is an investment. A tijara, bedlu ra's al mal, talaban li ribh. But look at the beauty here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He needs nothing from us. In takfuru antum wa man fil ardi jami'a. If you were to disbelieve, you and everyone on earth, Allah azza wa jal subhanahu wa ta'ala is the all rich, the one deserving of all praise. Allah needs nothing from us. But Allah is directing us towards something that is for our benefit. And the benefit is azim. That is why, if, if I was to say today, and I came with a scheme and I said, Ikhwa, I have an opportunity, I can make you a millionaire. You might have someone listening in China, they may come to Masjid Sunnah in Cranford. Because people, when we talk about money and wealth, people are interested normally. So what about when we hear Allah Azza wa Jal, Tabaraka wa Ta'ala? The Lord of all of mankind saying, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu. Oh you who believe. And that's a condition for this investment. You have to be a believer. The munafiq can't make this investment. The kafir cannot make this investment. This is only for the people of Iman. Showing the importance of faith, Iman. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu. Hal adullukum ala tijaratin tunjikum min adabin alim. An investment, shall I direct you towards an investment that will save you from a painful torment. Now look, Allah Azza wa Jalla, He said, min adabin alim. It was general, in the indefinite form. Yes, this investment, it will save you from a painful torment in this world and a painful torment in the akhirah. Yes, it will give you happiness in this world and you will earn happiness in the akhirah. Because there is a torment in this dunya. Some people are punished in this world. Their heart is in a state of adab, mu'adab, torment on a daily basis. May Allah Azza wa Jal protect us from that. Allah Azza wa Jal mentions, لَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ For them is a painful torment in this world and a painful torment in the hereafter. So a person can be punished in this world and punished in the akhirah. Punished while they are living in the dunya, punished in the grave, and they can be punished in the hereafter. May Allah protect us from all of that. And Allah Azza wa Jalla said, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, O you who believe, Hal adullukum ala tijaratin tunjikum min adabin alim. Shall I direct you towards an investment? It will save you from a painful torment. It will save you from the torment and misery of this world. It will save you from the torment of the grave. And it will save you from the torment of the blazing hellfire in the akhirah. So what is this investment that we have to make? And look at the beauty of this, brothers and sisters. The beauty of this people, someone may be sitting there and saying, well, I don't have anything to invest. I don't have any money. Here the capital is what? Ra's al-mal here, hayatul insan. All of us, we have the capital that is needed to make this investment. Because... The Ra'sul Mal, what is being referred to here, the capital that is required here is the lifespan of the human being and that ends with death. So if you're living, if you are breathing, regardless whether you are black or white, regardless whether you are Arab or non-Arab, regardless of whether you are poor or whether you are rich, everyone can make this investment if you are a believer and also if you fulfill the requirements that will be mentioned later on. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said in the authentic hadith, كل الناس يغدو فبايعوا نفسه فمعتقها أو موبقها. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, every person starts the day and they are trading their own soul. They are trading their soul. Either they set their soul free, either they set their soul free or they destroy and they ruin their soul. Meaning, some people, alhamdulillah, they set their soul free 
because they obey Allah Azza wa Jal Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. So that individual, Alhamdulillah, is upon righteousness and piety. However, some people will iyadu billah and refuge is sought with Allah, they sell their soul to the devil or they sell their soul to the immoral lust and desires that they crave. May Allah protect us all from that. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said it, Kullu nas yagdu nafsahu. Every person wakes up and they either, and they trade their soul, either they set it free or they ruin it. So yes, every single one of us, we can make this investment. We can all invest. Because, alhamdulillah, we have time, we're still li living, we are still breathing. What type of investment do we want to make? Because Allah says about this investment in the Quran, يَرْجُونَ تِجَارَةً لَن They hope for a, an investment that will never perish. This investment, some investments in this worldly life, they sometimes stuck, it increases and it decreases. Sometimes you invest your money, you go broke. This investment, if you invest as Allah commanded you to invest, there's nothing but profit. And this investment will never perish. Because if you invest as Allah commanded, then for you is eternal bliss in paradise. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said in the next verse. So he said, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, O you who believe, هَلْ أَدُلُّكُمْ عَلَىٰ تِجَارَةٍ تُنْجِيكُمْ مِنْ عَذَابٍ أَلِيمٍ تُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَتُجَاهِدُونَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ بِأَمْوَالِكُمْ وَأَنفُسِكُمْ ذَٰلِكُمْ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ Now, what, are the, what is required in order to make this investment? Allah Azza wa Jalla clarified it. That you believe in Allah and this carries the meaning of a command. That you believe in Allah. If you want to make this investment, you believe in Allah. You, and you believe in His Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And you strive with your own selves and you strive with your wealth. So this is what is required. This is the investment. Tu'minuna billah. You believe in Allah. You believe in His Lordship. You believe in His names and His attributes. With the belief of the people of the Sunnah, we affirm for Allah Azza wa Jal the names and the attributes that He affirmed for Himself in the Quran and that which was affirmed for Him by the Prophet Sallallahu in the authentic Sunnah without ta'atil, without denial, without stating how, taqeef, without metaphorically interpreting them away, a ta'wil, and without a tashbih resembling them to the attributes of the creation. Likewise, we single out Allah Azza wa Jal with all worship. So the one who associates partners with Allah Azza wa Jal, the one who commits shirk, major shirk, they haven't made this investment. The one who goes to the grave and makes tawaf around the grave, calling upon other than Allah Azza wa Jal, sacrificing to other than Allah Azza wa Jal, he hasn't fulfilled the requirements for this investment. You believe in Allah. And you believe in the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, as comes in the hadith, Thalathun, man kunna fi, wajada halawat al-iman. Three things, whoever possesses them, they find the sweetness of faith. Yes, this investment, even there comes a sweetness for the heart, a sweetness for the qalb. What are these three things? And yakun Allahu wa rasooluhu ahabba ilayhi mimma siwahuma. That Allah Azza wa Jal and the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam are more beloved to that person than anything else. When you hib al-mar, and that he loves a person and he does not love them except for Allah. And the last, and yakran ya'uda fil kufri, that he detests returning back to disbelief like he hates to be thrown into the fire. So when you make this investment, yes, even in this world there are benefits. A person will taste with their heart the sweetness of iman. You believe in Allah. You believe in the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and you strive with your own selves and you strive with your wealth in the path of Allah Azza wa Jal. That's important as well. We strive. We strive against our soul. We strive against the devil. We strive in promotion of the truth. And we strive with our wealth. Now if we were to think, Ikhwan, of an example as it relates to striving, 
then let's just look at the companions ridwanullahi alayhim the companions of the messenger of allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam if we were to just take the example of uthman ibn affan radiyallahu an one of the rightly guided khulafa one of the companions that was promised paradise and look how he sacrificed for the sake of allah azza wa jal for the spread of al-islam لِتَكُنْ كَلِمَةُ اللَّهِ الْعُلْيَا There comes in the authentic hadith, the origin is in Bukhari, that Uthman, he mentioned that the Prophet ﷺ on one occasion, he mentioned who is going to dig a well, and for them is paradise. Uthman, he said, I dug the well. He said, the Prophet ﷺ said on another occasion, who is going to equip the army, that needs to be equipped at these difficult times. He said, Wajahastum, I equipped him. Meaning, imagine that equipping a whole army. Some people in this time, they're told, look at the opportunity, Ikhwan. When somebody tells you, build a masjid, you're investing for yourself, for your akhirah. No one benefits except you. If you dig a well, which is sadaqa jariya, ongoing charity, that is for you an investment you're making for the akhirah, nobody else. Likewise, Outside in Sunan al nasai and it's authentic, Uthmani mentioned the Prophet said, Man yashtari buqati ali fulan, yazidu ha fil masjid. Who's going to buy the land of so-and-so so that it can be added to the masjid to expand the masjid and they will have better than that in paradise? Uthman said, I bought it min sulbi mali from my own wealth and he purchased that land so it could be added to the masjid. That's why these were the best generation. The Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhim. Khayr al-Nas Qarni, look at their sacrifice, look at their struggle. These individuals, not only did the Quran and the Sunnah change their lives, it changed the whole world. These individuals, they sat in the masjid, they learned from the Prophet wasallam. Yes, it changed them as individuals, but also these individuals went, went out into the wider world and they changed the dunya around them. That's the power of the religion of Islam. That is why the people of the Sunnah, our da'wah is everywhere where we are. That's why one of the scholars, he said, Habidullah Ta'ala, he said, the person of the Sunnah, even if he's teaching mathematics, you will see that upon his tongue. No doubt. So Allah Azza wa Jal wa Ta'ala, he mentions, even striving with your own selves. Yes, striving to learn. We have to learn. We have to strive to learn so that we can worship Allah Azza wa Jal correctly. All of us. Then we strive to implement what we have learned, al-amal, which is the fruit of knowledge. Then likewise, can, can someone sit back and relax? No. Then also they propagate the truth. They teach what they have learned. And they are patient upon that path until death. Sadly, you see some people, the older they get, the weaker they get in their pursuit of knowledge and in their pursuit of doing good. And that's a grave mistake. Because it's especially for us living in Western lands with many distractions around us. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he mentioned a profound statement. He said, Qil, it was said, the soul, if you do not occupy it, meaning with good, it will occupy you. And how true is that? True is that. The soul, if you do not occupy the soul with good, then that soul, it will occupy and it will divert you. So the older we, the older we get, we should be, become more diligent because we're closer to the grave. Not that, alhamdulillah, you, now I'm 40, or I'm, I'm 50, I'm 60, I don't have to seek knowledge, I do not have to learn. No, the Sahaba, Bukhari mentions it. They would seek knowledge even in their old age. Look at the age of some of the companions when the Prophet wasallam was sent with his message. So yes, our struggle is to learn. Sometimes it's, it's not easy, but we have to struggle to learn. For whose benefit? Our own benefit. So I know what I must believe. And my belief is correct. So that I know the rights that Allah Azzawajal has placed upon me. And I fulfill these rights. I know the rights of the human beings around me. Whether it's the right of the wife, the right of the husband, the rights of the child, the rights of the neighbor. That I know how to pray correctly. I know how to make wudu correctly. I know how to fast correctly. And so on and so forth. That requires a struggle. That's why the ulama, they said, seeking knowledge is a type of jihad. It's a struggle. <laughs> Likewise, a struggle to implement that knowledge. When you have it, we don't keep it to ourselves. We promote it and we try and share it 
with the people. And that's a struggle to try and propagate it amongst the people. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentioned the condition for this investment. He mentioned the requirements for this investment. And then Allah azza wa jalla tells us about the benefits in the akhirah and then the, also the benefits in the dunya of this investment. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, hal adullukum ala tijaratin tunjikum min adabin alim. Oh you who believe, shall I direct you towards an investment, a transaction that will save you from a painful torment. تؤمنون بالله ورسوله وتجاهدون في سبيل الله بأموالكم وأنفسكم ذلكم خير لكم إن كنتم تعلمون يغفر لكم ذنوبكم ويدخلكم جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار ومساكن طيبة في جنة عدن ذلك الفوز العظيم Allah will forgive you of your sins. Allah Akbar. We all need to be forgive, forgiven for our sins and our shortcomings. He will forgive you of your sins. If you make this investment, Allah promises that He will forgive you for your sins. Who is not in need of that? He will enter you into the gardens of paradise beneath which rivers flow. Every believer wants paradise. And he will give you luxurious, luxurious dwellings in paradise. He will give you luxurious dwellings in paradise. In the gardens of Eden. And again, this is ultimate success. That's in the akhirah, the hereafter. <coughs> Somebody may say, what about the dunya? What about this world? And look, that's the beauty of the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not leave anything that we are in need of except that it's clarified in the book of Allah azza wa jalla. That is why we need to take time to read it and reflect upon it. The more you read the Quran, lessons will become apparent to you over time that you think subhanallah I never ever thought about that before. When you compare it, when you compare yourself to the book of Allah, the time that you're living as it relates to various issues, you will realize, subhanAllah, look at this lesson that was right before me. But I, I never thought of it. There are treasures in the book of Allah that continuously, until you leave this world, you will come across things that you never knew. All from the book of Allah, Azza wa Jal. Because every single one of us, our knowledge is limited. But this Quran, as Allah Azza wa Jal said concerning it, إِنَّ هَذُ الْقُرْآنَ يَهْدِي لِلَّتِي هِيَ أَقْوَمْ Indeed, the Qur'an, it guides to that which is most correct and most just. That is why the Qur'an, Medina, no sword was raised. The Qur'an, walillah alham, was that which conquered Medina and opened up the whole a city, the city of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, it's as if someone said, what about the dunya? Okay. This is the reward in the akhirah, and that's great, no doubt. Because Allah will forgive you of your sins. He will enter you into gardens of paradise. He will give you luxurious dwellings in the gardens of Eden. That is ultimate success. Okay, somebody may ask, well, what about this dunya? Allah said, وَأُخْرَى تُحِبُّونَهَا Another blessing from Allah, which you will love. Because sometimes, unfortunately, as human beings, we're short-sighted. We can only see what is immediately in front of us. Sometimes we can't see the bigger picture. Because if we could see the bigger picture at all times, then we would know that waiting in the akhirah is eternal paradise for the believers, those who die upon a tawheed. And in the akhirah and the hereafter, waiting for the disbelievers, the disobedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the hellfire, which is eternal. May Allah protect us from that. So Allah Azza wa Jalla said, "Wa ukhra tuhibbunaha." There's another blessing in addition to all of those blessings that the slave will receive as a result of making this investment in the akhirah, in the hereafter. Wa ukhra tuhibbunaha, nasrum min Allahi, wa fathun qarib, wa bashir al mu'minin. Allah said, Subhanahu wa Taala, and there is another blessing that you love. Nasrum min Allah, victory from Allah Azza wa Jal. So if a person is given Nasr, victory from Allah Azza wa Jal, for you is security, for you is safety, for you is happiness, for you is stability, for you is all that is good. Because if Allah aids you 
and Allah Azza wa gives you victory, then who can harm you? Who? Man yaglibuk. If your Lord aids you and gives you victory, who can overcome you? No one. Even if the whole of mankind, un mankind united together to harm you, they would never be able if Allah is with you, subhanahu wa ta'ala, he aided you with victory and success. And no doubt part of that is happiness. وَأُخْرَةُ تُحِبُّونَهَا نَصْرٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَفَتْحٌ قَرِيبٌ And an imminent conquest. If you were in a difficult period of time as well, part of that, no doubt. Alhamdulillah, we saw how Mecca was opened. وَلِلَّهِ الْحَمْدِ And we saw after that, how Islam th spread throughout the various lands. But also, even if you're in difficulty, Allah Azza will give you an, an imminent way out if you fear Allah Azza and you make the correct investment. If, you make, if we make the correct investment, Allah will give you a way out. And the servant should be certain of that. And then Allah Azza wa said, وَبَشِّرِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Give glad tidings to the believers. Share this amongst them. Tell them. Tell them about this investment. Tell them about this investment that is free. Meaning it doesn't require money. All it requires from them is what? As we mentioned, the requirements, belief, belief in Allah, belief in the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to strive with their own selves and to strive with their wealth in the path of Allah Azza If they make this investment, then for them is all that is good in this world and all that is good in the hereafter, in the akhirah. Then in the next ayah, Allah Azza gives an example. In the next verse, the last verse in that surah, Allah Azza gives a real life example of those who invested correctly and some of the fruits that resulted from that and those who did not. What's the next verse? Question before we go on, Ikhwan, just a linguistic point for those, inshallah, just to make sure that we're awake because I know it's late and I don't want to speak too long. Habidukumullah. Why is it? Why do we recite it? Yaghfir lakum. Why is it majzum? Here, the verb. Why is it majzum? Anyone? Why is the verb majzum? Tfaddal. Where's the shart? Ijlis, Ijlis. Why is it majzum? Again, showing the importance of, of learning the Arabic. Learning the Arabic, why, Ikhwan? Not, not learning the Arabic so that you can understand the Qur'an. The, the, the Arabic language is the key. So when you read the Qur'an, when you hear the Qur'an, again, knowing the language, knowing the Arabic principles of grammar, Alhamdulillah, it opens up all of these meanings for you. Just from taking a bit of time to learn. And I always say, if the Orientalists can be dedicated enough to learn Arabic for academia and they don't even believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and some of them they do it in order to try and find what they believe to be problems with the religion of Islam and they haven't been able to produce anything of any substance and they will never be able to produce anything of any substance then what about the Muslim that prays five daily salawat and the Muslim that prays salat al taraweeh every Ramadan and the Muslim that reads the book of Allah azza no doubt that should be inspiration enough for a person to say you know what before next Ramadan, I'm going to, inshallah, I'm going to make jihad, the legislated jihad against my soul, and I'm going to learn the Arabic language. I have one year to do it. How many? All of us can do it. It's about dedication and consistency. And being around people that have the same goals. If you're around someone, all he wants to do is play the, you know, the PlayStation FIFA all day, that's what you're going to do. You're going to be an expert on FIFA, right? It's not going to benefit you much. You're not going, there's not much prosperity coming from FIFA. Naam. But if you're around someone, Alhamdulillah, he's saying, you know what, I'm going to Ajrumiya. Or I'm going to this class. Or what's the Arab of that? After a while, you're going, he's not going to get me tomorrow. I'm going to be prepared for him. Naam, Tfadl, you had your hand up. Me? Yes. Uh, um, I don't know, but I know someone who knows. <laughs> Are they here? <laughs> Are they here? Uh, they don't want me to say it. No, no, Alhamdulillah, highlight them. They have to say it. It's, it's question. It's you. Tfaddal, why, why is it majzum? Tfaddal, tfaddal. Why is it majzum? Anyone, why is it yaghfir lakum? Because the origin in, in the al fi'l al mudari is that it would be marfu'ah, right? Yaghfiru, tfaddal. Is it because it's, uh, um, it's jawab for to be like, um, the amr? Where's the amr? 
تؤمنون بالله تؤمنون إذا إذا الفعل المضارع تؤمنون علامة الرفع يعني ثبوت النون so where's the amr you looked on your phone didn't you yes see <laughs> <laughs> I knew it because you, you, you're, you're very close. Tu'minuna billah, it carries the meaning of a command. Even though it's not, it has the meaning of a command. So yaghfir is jawab, is the jawab to that which is majzum. Again, all of you can learn this for yourself. You just have to learn Arabic language, the principles of a nahu. And you can do it. Every single one of you can do it, the young and the old. And if you take your time to make that investment, you will see the fruits. Bidnillahi ta'ala. So in the next verse, حَبِذَكُمُ اللَّهِ Allah Azza wa Jalla said, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا O you who believe, كُونُوا أَنصَارُ اللَّهِ كَمَا قَالَ عِيسَى بْنُ مَرْيَمَ لِلْحَوَارِيِّينَ مَنْ أَنصَارِ إِلَى اللَّهِ O you who believe, aid the religion of Allah, aid the cause of Allah. Like when Isa, Jesus, the son of Mary, he said to his disciples, who are going to be my helpers for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Yes, إخوان, in our life, we have to stand for something. We want to leave behind a legacy, right? A legacy for good. Not that, you know, yes, you know, he was, a, a, he was a, a, a rapper. What, that's an evil legacy. What type of legacy is that? A person wants to leave behind a good legacy. And in order to leave behind a good legacy, look, alhamdulillah, the best legacies that we find, the prophets and the messengers, alhamdulillah, the, the righteous, the sahaba, the tabi'un, that's the legacy a person wants to leave behind. To stand for the haq, to stand for the truth. Not for any personal benefit, because it's the truth. And when a person stands firm for the sake of Allah, you'll see that person. is like, like Imam Ahmed, rahmatullahi alayhi. He was like a mountain during the fitna of the, when the, when the rulers, a number of rulers successively, they were forcing the people to say the Quran was created. billah, Which is a statement of disbelief. Imam Ahmad and a few with him, Imam Ahmad stood firm even though it resulted in imprisonment and it resulted in mistreatment and oppression. He stood firm and he said the Quran, Kalam Allah ghayru makhluq. The Quran is the speech of Allah and it's uncreated. Why? Because Allah Azza He granted him success, uh, tawfiq, success and he stood for something. He stood for the truth and Allah Azza wa subhanahu wa ta'ala raised him in degree to the extent that he's known as the Imam of Ahli Sunnati wal Jama'ah. Some of the Salaf they said, Allah Azza wa saved the religion of Islam through two individuals, Abu Bakr on the day of apostasy and uh, Imam Ahmad during the fitna when the people were saying that the Quran was created with Iyadu Billah. Imam, Imam Ahmad, he understood the danger of that statement. Because, it, look, some people may not understand it. There's some people, again, people of misguidance or people who are ignorant. They may say, oh, what's the problem with that? The problem is that the scholars, they perceive the problem. Because if you say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he does not possess the attribute of speech, and Allah Azza subhanahu wa ta'ala does not speak with that which he chooses, when he chooses, then the prophets and the messengers, they convey the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if Allah does not speak, then what were they conveying? It leads to rejection of the religion from the beginning to the end. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, Ya ayyuhu ladheena amanu, O you who believe, kunu ansar Allah. Yes. Not that, you know, you, I'm 50, alhamdulillah, you know what, I've done the dawah thing, it's time to retire. Okay, this is not a, a job in Walmart, you know, or, or Asda, you know, uh, that you're retiring. This is until death. Alham, alhamdulillah that you're with the people of the sunnah, you're with the people of a tawheed. Alhamdulillah you support. Now, sometimes the older we become, no doubt, we lose a lot of our strength and a lot of our energy, but still we continue. One thing, ikhwan, and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he grants us all firmness upon the truth until we die and depart from this world. One thing that's alarming, and I was talking to some of the brothers, the amount of brothers, subhanAllah, that were around, you know, maybe 10 years ago and 20 years ago or maybe longer than that. And subhanAllah, you don't see nor hear or anything about them. But they're still living. And that causes a person to become scared we, for their own self. What about me? How am I going to end? May Allah Azza wa Guide those who have gone astray, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant, grant us all firmness. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, قَالَ الْحَوَارِيُّونَ نَحْنُ أَنصَارُ اللَّهِ فَآمَنَ الطَّائِفَةُ مِنْ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ وَكَفَرَ الطَّائِفَةُ فَأَيَّدْنَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا عَلَىٰ عَدُوِّهِمْ فَأَصْبَحُوا ظَاهِرِينَ Look at this investment. Look at again the more fruits of this investment. A real life example. 
a real example. The Hawariyun, the disciples of Isa, Jesus, the son of Mary, they said, we are going to aid you for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you had a group of them that believed. And you had a group from the children of Israel, they disbelieved. Allah said, and we gave victory and we aided those who believed over their enemies. And they were manifest and they were apparent. Allahu Akbar. Somebody may say, okay, that's talking about Banu Israel, but that applies to Ahl Sunnah as well. Even to the extent that you find some of the scholars of tafsir, they mention when talking about that verse, the hadith, لا تزال طائفة من أمتي They will not cease to be a group from this ummah, manifest and firm upon the truth. They will not be harmed by those who oppose them, nor those who forsake them until the command of Allah is established. Even that's applicable to Ahl al-Islam. What side of the fence do we want to sit on? No doubt we want to sit upon the truth. May Allah grant us all tawfiq to do that. And I'll close it, Juan. I don't want to util alayk. It's 9.20, alhamdulillah. And the brothers and the sisters have been very patient. And alhamdulillah, many of you have... I, I don't know if this is a holiday tomorrow for the children, right? Or the, yes. Nam's holiday. But for those who have to work. So I'll stop there, inshallah. Rabbana... لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب وسبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك. أنا أستبدأ يا إخواني لس أني أبدأ برادس هاف أني إديشنز أو أني كوركشنز الحمد لله شكر الله لكم جميعا.